Hey everybody, how is it going? This is The Avengers, this is season two. This is episode number one. This episode is called Mr. Teddy Bear. It's going to be interesting starting this because it's been a very long time since I finished season one, actually. It's probably been close to maybe a year since I last watched the last episode of season one that exists. And having the entire season here now is going to make this so much more interesting. I mean, I was already hooked and interested in what I was able to watch of season one, but season two, I think, is probably going to be a lot more compelling to watch because I'll be able to link things better than I had in season one. Um, my main things in this is, like, hopefully I still get to see Carol because I really liked Carol. Obviously, Steed is around as well. Sadly, we didn't see his, like, first introduction. We just kind of saw him appear in The Frighteners. And then we've got Keel as well. So it's going to be an interesting journey there. Mr. Teddy Bear gives me really strange thoughts though because when I was growing up like in the early 90s there was this TV show on I think it was CITV called Old Bear and it was one of the most sweetest things I've ever seen and I, I believe it's based on books because there's Old Bear books I think I've got one somewhere still from when I was a kid and for some reason the title of this just really reminded me of that so if it's in relation to maybe a toy shop or something then that'd be like cool because I'm trying to think like what could be the reason why we would find ourselves maybe looking into what's happening in a toy shop is there like something happening there or it could be something completely different and it could just be about maybe a teddy somebody owns or it could be a metaphor so I'm going to get on into this let's go good evening and welcome to the man and the place that will mean we won't have Carol either not of one but of many places his name is Colonel Vernon Wayne Gilly (sighs) whose ninth book Go Anywhere has just been published. And so tonight, Colonel Wayne Gilly is back with us in our studio again, and he's going to give us some of his views, and also, we hope, tell us some of the fascinating stories that he's collected in a lifetime of crossing and recrossing the world. I feel like I'm about to watch the sky at night. Out, Out of all the places, out of all the countries that you've visited, can you think of one that you'd prefer to remember than any of the others? Wales. Colonel. Oh, is this live TV? How'd he die? He was poisoned. What with? Cyanide? Cyanide? Was it in his water? Go in there and take a deep breath. You can still smell the stuff. What sort of dose? Enough to kill a horse. A couple of horses. Oh, oh. If I hadn't fished this out of his stomach myself, I would never have believed it. Look, what well, he was taking pills for some sort of allergy. Yes, he was certainly allergic to this one. Someone switched now, them. Take that in half. <gasps> now, that little chap there. Shit is a watch mechanism. I don't know how you set it or wind it up yet, but that's what it is. Why the hell? And that was in stomach. Yes, they're in two halves. I've, I've put it together since. There's a sort of spring mechanism which shoots the two halves apart. And that was set to go off at 8.30 last night, the time that he appeared on the air. I suppose so, yes. So he could have taken this instead of one of his own pills any time during the day. At half past eight, shoots enough cyanide into his stomach to knock out a regiment. That's murder. No. Oh. Oh, shit. How many of these things are there? 24, including the one I swallowed. And they're all fitted with this time mechanism. Every one. It wouldn't have made any difference which one he'd taken. <gasps> it would just have been the same. Uh, they were all in pieces when we found the bottle. Well, they all came apart at half past eight last night, is that it? That's right. Wow. <laughs> Someone yeah, went to found, very serious well, lengths to make one sure one this guy dies. A couple of dozen more wouldn't matter. But expensive, Steve. Very expensive. How much one of these little gadgets cost? 40, 50 pounds if you had them made specially. Swiss, I suppose. Oh, 12, 1,500 pounds a lot. Biggish overheads. Not really, not for him. Him? What do you mean, him? Are you running to clairvoyance these days, Steve? No more than you. I see you've got his file out already. All right, well, let's have a look. Olaf Pomeroy, alias Jules Edward Bear, alias... Edward Spearman. <gasps> yes, and several others oh, we don't know about. Bear. Mr. Teddy Bear. But how do we get hold of him? Box number, telephone number? <laughs> that voice. Um, you don't call him, he calls Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Teddy Bear likes to work alone as much as possible. Bum, anyway, bum, you want contact bum, to be made bum, somehow. Bum, 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 that's right, and hire him to do another killing. Um, but me, for instance. Bum, 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 I'm considered bum, good bum. enough, babe. I don't see why not. It's not my pedigree once, only money. Well, we put it around that you're in the market for hired assassins. So, if you're ready, let's get started. Oh, thank heaven. I thought we were in for a musical evening. Uh, I wonder if she just came into it in this episode or if we met her at the end of season one that that I sadly can't watch. I thought it was just like calling a cab. Who do you want me to represent? Well, that is your homework, so get your boots Because they seem very familiar to each other. Mantle's held. Yes, sir. 
He's going to Looks your like dog. a large house from the map. Well, hold on. It's slap in the middle of a marsh. The nearest village is Barton, and that should be. I love that he has dogs. By car. This is Barton, isn't it? That's right, love. I'm looking for a place called Mantle's Hope. Do you know where it is? Left it a bit late, haven't you? Thought you'd be able to see your feet this time of night. Not out there. Oh, so I can't land for years. Yes, I know. I'm from the Preservation Society. I'm supposed to have a look at it. I mean, I lost my way. Shouldn't have thought it was worth preserving. <laughs> Still, out the door, turn left. Seven mile up the hill, you'll see the drive. In the car? Yes. Mind how you go, then. Right, thank you. Um, yes, sir. What can I do for you? Oh. What a cool house. I hope these doors are just automatic doors and it's not just something really creepy. Is there a camera in there? Because that head moved. Sit down. Over there. Oh, shit. I hope I did not startle you, Mrs. Gale. Where's her husband? You must forgive my sense of humour. He sometimes runs away with me. Where are you? Here? Right here. <laughs> well, you cannot see me, but I see you. Look upwards and a little to your left. Camera. Let's get down to business. Now, I have examined your credentials and find them satisfactory in every respect. So I'll take the job. I understand you want John Steed dead. That's right. Publicly or privately? It's of no importance. <laughs> what is the charge for your services? Was it 100,000? Oh. That's high. I was given to understand. As it is Mr. Steed, my price is higher than normal on that account. I just went for a nice ride in the country, it's all. You like the feel of the wind on your face, eh? Yes, right. <laughs> Through his hair. All right, that's right. <laughs> Well, we all have our own idea of fun. I see from this, it says you've only just got that license for that great big bike of yours. I hope you got your L plates up. Oh, good loss. Aren't you just a bit old for doing the ton? I see here it says you've been driving trucks for years, but I suppose it's a bit too difficult to follow anyone in a truck, eh? Oh, well, he wonder we do. Oh, of course, you had a bit of engine trouble. You lost your ignition lead, eh? You ought to be careful how you turn that engine of yours over. You might rupture yourself. How do you know about that? Motorcycling's your hobby. Knowing things is mine. I know, for instance, that several people would like to talk to you, only they can't be bothered about... Hey, you're motoring, aren't you? Oh. Uh, drugs, immoral earnings, and I should think breaking and entering and carrying an offensive weapon. I don't mean your motorbike, Henry. But I don't think anyone really wants to be bothered talking to you about that sort of thing. So why don't we just talk about one thing, and that is teddy bears. You know, wait a minute, what are you talking about? I'm talking yeah. about teddy bears. I collect them got him interested. Mine. They're missing one from my collection. Do you understand that, Henry? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Are you quite sure? Yeah, I'm quite sure. Good. In that case, I can let you go. Let me go. Yeah. If you can't help me, you can't. No hard feelings. What had uh, Henry to add to the subject of Mr. Teddy Bear? Well, nothing much, but uh, he'll be back. That the best you could do? Well, look, we knew we couldn't hold him. Anyway, he was scared. I wonder who Henry's working for. Oh, I don't know. Probably somebody who wants to put a little money on the side finding out who Mr. Teddy Bear is. I like that. I've got like a practice like wrestling with alligators, so that's Henry's business. So as far as you're concerned, it's just bait. Oh, I wouldn't worry about Henry if I were you. No, you wouldn't. <clears throat> I've got far better bait than Henry. Oh? Now, what do we know about Mr. Teddy Bear? He's a murderously efficient technician. He spends money like water. Yeah, there's something more. Yes, there is. All this business with talking dolls and television cameras. He said he likes practical jobs. No, vanity, that's his weakness. Now, if we can offer him a personal challenge, something that his vanity couldn't refuse, you know, tempt him to come out in the open, then we're getting somewhere. What had you in mind? Oh, yeah. This. Oh. Mr. Teddy Bear. Good evening, Mr. Steed. I am glad you could come. Oh. How's Don't this do guy doing hurry, this? Mr. Steed. He was too eager to meet me, Mr. Steed. And besides, you brought him. You seem to have found something, Mr. Steed. May I see? <gasps> Ah, yes. It's a necklace. Stone, but quite worthless, I regret to say. To me, at any rate. You are going? Surely not without your hat. Ah, everything all right? Yeah, nothing there at all, sir. Well, not unless it's a mine out of the floor. Oh, anyway. Good. Good. Well, if you find anything yourself, let us know. We'll come and fix it up for you. Thanks, sir, boy. Thanks. Well, I feel <laughs> good as gold. Well, that's what you think. 
that's what you think. Gold. My dear old girl. What's the matter, eh? Did you like him? Well, you got a friend, anyway. Oh, the dog's going to find something. Hello. Good night, Mr. Steed. Sleep well. Goods delivered as agreed. Balance due £198,000. <gasps> I will take the balance not before this evening and not later than tomorrow night in industrial diamonds. Do you understand that? Industrial diamonds. Where and how will you have them delivered? I will arrange for them to be collected. My representative will call on you. You will please follow his instructions. Shit. Very well. Thank you, Mrs. Gale. I'd like to leave a message, please. For... <gasps> Why aren't you dead? Oh, yes. I believe you've something to give me, haven't you? Diamonds. My dear girl, what's the matter? <laughs> what on earth is it? Bad news? Where did you get this? At the club. I was asked to deliver it to you and told that you would have something to give me, a package of some sort, I think. Please give Dr. Howell the box you've been keeping for me. Apologies for being a day early, Edward B. Mm, I congratulate you on still being alive. Well, it's the first thing, you know, I didn't know you had nerve gas in your armory. It's a bit tricky to handle, particularly mixed with a blistering agent. I have uh, quite a nasty burn. You're going to have to take one of those. Oh, shit. How long did you say it would keep me out of trouble? Six hours. About six hours, wasn't it? Mrs. Gale, it has been a pleasure to meet you. It's always a pleasure. I was I'm honor. sorry I had to lie to a lady. <laughs> oh, I wasn't going to knock him out for six hours. This was like so interesting to see that we've just gone straight into this new adventure with Steed and Kathy, who we've not met before. So I'm wondering if Kathy maybe came into it toward the end of season one and we met her toward the end and we learned that she's an anthropologist and she likes to collect antiquities. And I just thought this episode was actually really cool. There was no reference at all to Keel or Carol, which I was quite surprised by like they didn't reference them once so obviously that part of the story was obviously concluded by the end of the first season but obviously I can't watch that. I wonder if he ever got closure for what happened to his wife. I do have the audios that were reconstructed so I may have to go listen to those actually to kind of find out what happened toward the end and whether or not you know Kathy was introduced at that point or if we've just gone straight into it with her being part of the, the same organisation as Seed. I love the fact that we have Honor Blackman because I just adore Honor Blackman beyond words. She's one of my favourite people and I always remember like absolutely loving her in Jason and the Argonauts and to me that was kind of my first introduction to her when I was quite young and I just that's one of my favourite films and I just think she's amazing regardless of, of what she's in really and it was nice to see her dynamics with Steed they really worked well together and really bounced off each other quite well it was interesting that we never met her husband I wonder if it's ever referenced about maybe where her husband is what does he do is he still around is he not still around if not what happened to him because there was part of this episode with her and Steed where I was a little bit like oh hello but like nothing seemed to kind of come of it but I mean if you were in a room with Honor Blackman you would just be mesmerised by her anyway so like to watch this was actually really interesting like I like how there was this whole concept of this guy was very good at gadgets and he would kill people for a living and he was basically like a contract killer and the whole premise of trying to catch him was to get Kathy to basically say I want John Steed he's dead and to see the types of things that this guy would do like we saw the guy on the motorbike I think his name was Henry and he was sent to kind of follow honour and then obviously he ended up then dying himself because this guy got him because this guy after Steed had kind of arrested him whether or not Steed has the ability to do that I don't I don't know it's, it's apparently so and he then went to the same guy and was like I want you to kill him. So he died and it never ended well for him. What I liked most about this though was just how like kick-ass honour was in it to be honest like that end scene I 100% just expected her to shoot him in the kneecap even though Steve was like oh you wouldn't I was like she might actually so like to see her playing this character is actually really really nice and there's there's just something about I said this at the end of the last season because I went back and like rewatched my video on that and I have this 
love for Steed, actually, just from those two episodes. There's something about him that is just like the most charismatic thing. And I could watch him all day. Pair him with Honor, and I'm just in heaven watching this. I may just have to go watch the next episode, and I will see you guys later. So thank you. <laughs>